of all, it's an honor to be with you today. Where are we speaking to you from? I'm right here in my office in Beverly Hills on Cannon Drive. Amazing. Well, before we get into it, let's let's give a little bio if you do not know who Joyce Ray is. Record-breaking, award-winning realtor, Joyce's portfolio includes some of the most prominent and expensive properties sold in Los Angeles, but specifically Beverly Hills and beyond. With over $6 billion in career sales under her belt, local and international publications have branded Joyce the Great Dame of Real Estate, Billionaire's Broker, and the Fair Lady of Luxury Real Estate. She's worked with numerous 500, Fortune 500 and celebrity clients, including Sonny and Cher, Lionel Richie, and Taylor Swift. So, Joyce, it's so amazing to be able to sit down with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. It's I, I am delighted to be here, and you know that my heart is without living. <laughs> well, Joyce, um, besides being one of the best in the industry, um, you've been a partner of ours for many of years. And, you know, when I was able to do an interview today, I thought it would be special to really get to learn about Joyce Ray. Because even for me, some of these questions, I'm excited to learn more about you. Because a lot of times when I speak to you, we're always talking about current current markets, current what's going on in the trend. But I'd really under like to start out, which the first question is, is tell us about your journey in the real estate industry and how did you even get started as a realtor? Like what made you become a realtor? Well, it was all a question of coincidence, right? As life so often is. I started out wanting to save the world. I was, I was uh, teaching business law, business English, and business principles in South Central Los Angeles and training teachers for the University of Southern California. And um, they had a special program, Western Airlines had a special program at the time to train school teachers to fly as airline hostesses. So on holidays, I was an airline stewardess when I wasn't teaching school. And I had a flight pass. And guess what? A television star sat next to me on the plane. And the rest is history. I married him. And immediately he had a movie in South America. So I had to give up my teaching career in order to be with my husband. And uh, when you're a television star, and especially when you have a hit series, you have a big income. So he immediately was buying houses, right? We bought several houses. And I thought, gosh, this is fun. I like house hunting. And it looks so easy from the outside. Little did I know that it wasn't as easy as it looked. But that was really how I got started as a realtor. So basically, you got started as a realtor probably to help him um, to buy the houses and to offset you know, the commissions. And then you became very good at what you were doing, I assume. Well, no, I didn't really think so much about all of that. I just thought that it looked like an easy job and I okay. thought it would be really fun to do. And he actually had a friend who was an actress who was working in a real estate firm in Beverly Hills. And he suggested that I contact her and I did. And she was working in a small boutique firm here in Beverly Hills. The name of the firm was Jack Hupp and associates. And this man was my mentor and my idol. He was an all-American basketball star for USC. He was president of the Rotary. He was president of the Chamber of Commerce. And he wrote the first code of ethics for the Beverly Hills Realty Board. So oh, wow. I know. So this was the man that taught me the real estate business. And I thought the world of him. He was married to Marie Windsor, who did B movies with Ronald Reagan. And he was an absolute doll. And he loved to play tennis every afternoon in Homeby Hills, which was is one of the A plus neighborhoods here. And I would always have a real estate question and I'd have him paged off the tennis court to come to the phone to help me make my deal. But uh, he was he was just a prince of a human being. And I was so fortunate to be trained by him. So you consider him one of your mentors. Who are some of your other mentors um, in the business? Well, um, it was really I 
went from working with him and for him, it was from there that I went to start Rodeo, the original Rodeo Realty in 1979. Um, I established along with um, uh, Harley Sandler, the first company in the world to only handle million dollar houses. And that was a really big deal in 1979. So, um, so you've been dealing I, with luxury for a, a, a tremendous, since you started. Yes. So mm -hmm. that, well, because what happened um, in that those first couple of years uh, was that I met, had the good fortune to meet uh, a couple. I'll never forget. I was, I was at a friend's barbecue and I was sitting on the floor talking and these people said, oh, you know, we're thinking of buying a house. I said, great. You know, I was a new young realtor at the time. I'd been in the business a couple of years. It, little did I know that, um, first of all, this guy had just sold his company and had a lot of money to spend. And so I started showing them property and I sold, I sold them the a Sunny and Cher mansion in 1976. And you'll laugh at this because I sold it to them for, um, uh, I, if I remember correctly, it was a million two hundred thousand dollars in 1976, and that was a huge deal. It was. Plastic. What would that be today? In today's day, what what like that property? What would it go for today? That property. Well, that same property changed hands with some additional acreage for ninety million dollars in the last year and a half. Wow. Well, I think that's important, um, you know, because a lot of times I see people and I've seen also people that work in your team, how they've grown working with a mentor, someone that is honorable, someone that is very good and someone that has longevity, because as you know, people come and go, but longevity is key in, in the business that you deal with so many people. Um, don't you think that played a huge role in your success is that you were able to land yourself with the right mentor and that you learned so much from that person? Oh, I think it's invaluable. And I see it even now with my own team, uh, with the young people coming in. I love working with them. I love helping them. And, you know, when, and they, they seem to all appreciate me so much. And, and it just, when they do well, you know, I, it, it's almost better than my, my doing well, you know, I, 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 I really enjoy their success. So, um, you know, the whole, it, the importance of mentorship, I think in any industry is very important. I bet you had a mentor yourself along the way. No. Yeah. I've had many mentors and I've been very uh, fortunate to, 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 um, to, to be around people that have been successful and have wanted to teach me, but it, it takes humility and you wanting to learn from somebody for them to invest time into you. That's true. So Joyce, you talked about um, the sale of the Sunny and Share, you know, the, your client that bought the Sunny and Share home. But the key is, and you know, it's confidence. What was your first real significant sale in the industry that really impacted your confidence? And you said to yourself, wow, I, you know, this is something that I, I could be really good at. Well, I think probably the first was even before that Sunny and Share sale. And it was... Um, it was Lee Strasberg. I don't know if you know who that is, but if yeah, you're in the acting world, everyone knows yeah. who he is. Well, he was an acting, my husband was a member of the actor studio and I met Lee and um, his then wife, Anna, and they were searching for a house. And um, I, I uh, just that at the time I was told he was looking for a house um i discovered this house that was what we now call a pocket listing back then i didn't even know what it was right it was just a house mm -hmm. that somebody wanted to sell and it wasn't listed with anyone so i took lee i showed him only one house i took lee up to that house and he bought it so of course you can imagine here's the most important acting coach in hollywood and I've shown him one house and sold it to him. So he thought I was a complete genius. And yeah. of course, having having him say that about me certainly launched my 
my will improve my confidence on on my ability to sell real estate needless to say well i think the key is also um knowing your customer and by you saying you saw a property that you felt the client would like, you brought him there and he bought that property. It takes your your experience and your, well, not even your experience, your your thought process to giving what the client would want, you know? Because so many times people will just show them things that the client doesn't want and show them 40, 50 properties. And I think that's remarkable that you knew what the client wanted. He went there and he bought it. Yeah, it was very exciting. Then the best part of the story is that he then recommended me to Shelly Winters. And uh, Shelly Winters um, uh, was, uh, unbeknownst to me, apparently the biggest looky loo in town. So I was showing her around. I didn't have the same good fortune with her that I showed her <laughs> one house and she bought. So we're, after we've gone out a couple of times, we're looking at a house and she has on a big moo moo. And we get to the swimming pool, she, pull, she pulls off her moo. She has nothing on underneath and she dives in the swimming pool. And um, uh, the broker uh, standing there kind of was like, it was a male broker. He's like, like that, shocked. And of course she's <laughs> like 250 pounds at the time and she's swimming in the pool. And I said, don't just stand there, get her a towel. <laughs> so anyway, she gets, she gets out of the pool dries herself off, and then she tells me later that she wants to make an offer. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it, right? So I'm in the office writing up the offer, and this old-time realtor comes in on a cane, and she said, Joyce, what are you doing? I said, I'm so excited. I'm writing an offer for Shelly Winters. And she says, Shelly Winters is the biggest looky-loo. She's been looking for a house for 20 years. I went, oh, no. And in that moment, the phone rings and it's Shelly. And Shelly says, oh, Joyce, you know, I'm not sure if I should make this offer. I said, Shelly, your offer is so low that I wouldn't worry about it. You probably won't get the house anyway. So she says, oh, OK. So I go over, I get her. In those days, she went in person, right? I go over, I get her to sign the offer. So now I'm presenting the offer to the business manager for the seller. And I get to the meeting and he looks at the offer. He says, oh, this is a low offer. I said, I realize it's a low offer, but if you want to sell the house today to Shelly Winters, you will sign this offer. You will not counter offer. And sure enough, they signed it and she bought the house. And five years later, she had the best selling book, Shelly, which was her memoir. And she called me up and she said, Joyce, I want you to come over to the house. I said, great, Shelly. So I go over there and I walk in and she signed the book to me, to Joyce, who sold me the house that gave me the peace of mind to write this book. Love, Shelly. Well, I got to tell you, Joyce, you know, because I deal with so many realtors and, you know, everyone's telling you looky-loo um, and pretty much probably everyone didn't want to show her anywhere. And you did. And you got the deal done. So, I, I mean, I think that's an I mean, that's why you're Joyce Ray. You're the, you know, that's why you're the great dame of real estate. Uh, what a story. So I obviously um, we've been talking a lot about the ups, but real estate's also known for the downs. Can you share a challenging experience that you've encountered in your career and the lessons you've learned from it? Because obviously everything is not, you know, success. There's also, you know, some, you know, some downs also in the market. Well, of course, you know, there are a lot of downs and I've been through a lot of those. I I think one of the toughest times I was through was during the savings and loan crisis in the 90s. Uh, you know, we had very little selling and um, the, the, the savings and loans were all going out of business. And, uh, you know, you just had to be, you kind of had to work like crazy and hope to God you got lucky. Um, but, you know, I always say when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And how long of a drought was it? The, how bad was the market like for how long? Oh, was it? I'm Three it months, was six years. Months, two years. Oh, no, it was years. Are you kidding? The early 90s, it, an awful lot of people dropped out of the business and it was very, very difficult. Since then, have you seen anything that tough or was that the toughest that it's been? That was the toughest that I think. Well, there was also back in the 80s, we had 15% uh, interest. You think it's bad now? <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're, we're still under 8%. The only way we can sell houses. 
was we, we had something called a wraparound mortgage and there weren't the escalation clauses. So you could um, keep the existing mortgage and then the seller would extend financing. So they wouldn't pay off their existing loan. So let's say they had a $3 million loan. They'd wrap around it, give the sell the buyer another $3 million, have a $6 okay. million dollar loan and just have them then put exactly. So the, the, sell, the house would still remain in the name of the seller under those circumstances. Oh, interesting. So, um, and when you, when you got to COVID, were, you know, and the market was completely shut down, I got to believe, you know, because you have a large team, you have a big infrastructure. I got to believe that was a scary time too. This last year, or two years ago during COVID, when everything was shut down in California. Oh, well, that, the fortune that was short, Seth. I mean, yeah. we, yes, we... In fact, I have a great story about that. Uh, you know, when I when when COVID hit and we were all locked up in our houses those first few weeks, I was asked to do a news interview. And I thought, oh my God, I can't go on news and tell people that I'm never gonna sell a house again. <laughs> what am I gonna say? And I looked around the house and I thought to myself, I have never spent so much time in my house before. I mean, for two weeks, I'm looking at the rafters and think, you know, I'm bored stiff. I, and no one's going to the office. Nobody's calling yeah. to show houses, right? And uh, I thought, well, I can say that. I can say the fact that we're all, because we're in our houses, our houses are going to become more important. And because of that, the market is going to take off. I never dreamt that that would be an accurate prediction. I was just trying to make something up that was positive. And it turned out to be true. So Beverly Hills is a highly competitive real estate market. What strategies have you employed to stand out consistently um, to be in, you know, to, to succeed in such a competitive market? I think, well, one of the things I've always tried to do is um, embrace innovation. I've tried, I was the first person to have a website in the early 90s. Someone called me up and said, do you want a website? I said, I'm not sure what that is, but yes, I do. But I think that I think you have to always look for new ways to bring in business, for new places to advertise, for new ideas. I think I mean, you have to do every single thing you can do to. Uh, I think also you bring that up not to interrupt you. One of the things that I liked is um, you actually with Instagram when Instagram kind of took over. You you really put a lot of effort into the Instagram and um and through that um you 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 know most people at your success would be like I don't need an Instagram I'm I'm number one why do I need to do that but you really embraced it and you have an amazing Instagram you have a huge amount of followers and I also remember when you built you know your website you always had like the best website you had your your sites was better than most company websites and. I think. Well, I've worked on, I, I, I try to, in fact, I'm just in the process of re updating and revamping my website after only two and a half years, because I, I think it's so important to be up to date in every area and be state of the art in every possible area of your business. So technology has transformed the real, this goes to my next question is, has technology has transformed the real estate in, industry? How have you adapted to and utilized technology to enhance your business and serve your clients better? I mean, you gave a funny story where you had a contract. And I mean, I think about that today. You have to go to your client to sign the paperwork. Then you got to go to the realtor. To, you know, like now it's so easy with DocuSign and all this technology. And then, I mean, think about it. You go and do a lowball and you actually have to look at the realtor in the face. It's easier if you send them an email. But if you actually have to go to their office, I mean, like you said, that's not an easy situation. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to send an email and lowball. Well, right behind the, the truth <laughs> is personal meetings, even today, usually pay off. I agree. That's a valid point. And so in your opinion, what are the key factors that set a successful realtor apart from the rest, especially in, you know, top markets like Beverly Hills? Well, I think it's probably a high energy level. I think it's a willingness to uh, commit to a 24-7 kind of routine because you have to always be putting your client's best interest first. And I think the most important thing is integrity because clients know right away 
if you're going to be doing the right thing and you're going to be putting their best interest above your commission. And then you you kind of talked about it. I don't know if there's any other experiences because in your bio, you talked about Sonny and Cher, but also Taylor Swift, who's probably coming from the greatest um, you know, concert in, in our history. Isn't she something? I mean, you've had an opportunity to work with so many people, so many stories, even like Lee Strandberg. I didn't even know he's a real person. I just thought it was an acting school. I didn't realize <laughs> the re like real I just person. thought it was the Lee Strandberg acting class. You know, I didn't <laughs> realize that it's an actual school. Um and so what are some like even tell me Taylor Swift. I think that's a great story. Tell me like a memorable experience on any celebrity. Well, um, if you, you know, can. Uh, well, most of them, you're not supposed to say anything, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I was I was quite I will say this, that with Taylor Swift, she had a remarkable level of maturity at the time I sold her the house because she was quite young. It was some years back. And I just, I felt she was such a lovely young woman. And, uh, uh, and, and generally that's been my experience over the years. I remember when I was uh, starting out in the business and I sold the house to Goldie Hawn. I, you know, I'm delightful. I enjoyed every minute of selling, representing Goldie and selling her house. And um, that's been that's been my experience. And one of my favorite clients was Lionel Richie. And I sold I sold uh, uh, I sold his house in the Hollywood Hills. And then I sold him the house he owns now, which is the old Guggenheim mansion, a magnificent house. So, um, you know, I, I've just represented the nicest people. I've been so fortunate. You ever pinch yourself like, you know, I mean, going from, you know, teaching South Central to, you know, working with some of the most remarkable people in the world and having them trust you to buy, you know, a very intimate part of their finances and their, you know, when someone buys a home, it's normally their largest purchase that they're doing. And, you know, I, I, I got to believe sometimes you just pinch yourself knowing, you know, the level of people you're dealing with in the transactions. Well, I do. I mean, it is, it's very exciting. And I, I, I do pinch myself because I, you know, I think there's one of the two great gifts in life. One is finding just the right partner that you love throughout your lifetime. And the other is finding the profession that you love. And some people get both of those. But, you know, I, I got one and I love my profession. And I often think, well, I love it as much today as I loved it that first day I sat in that first real estate office. And, and I remember having everybody around me talk about houses and I was trying to figure out, I was looking at maps and where are they talking about and what is it? And wow, I loved it then and I love it now. What advice would you give to someone watching this that's an aspiring realtor looking to build a successful career in the luxury real estate market based on your own experiences? Well, I think there's, I think one great thing is an education. I mean, there are plenty of people that are very successful without a formal education. I have a master's degree in, in business. Um, and I think that helped me along the way. Um, I think that, uh, I think, you know, you have to, you have to care about people. You can't be a good realtor unless you care about people, because I think that's just a number one prerequisite. Uh, and I think you, you, you have to be willing to devote the time and effort. I mean, I don't think anyone is successful in any profession without putting in the extra hours. And I'm sure you've done that with your publishing career, Seth. I mean, every, you know, um, I'll give you a great story. I tell this to everybody. I was having dinner one time with the Jills and they got a, a very important client. And they, before the food came, they walked up and said, we have to go. Our client, you know, is doing that. And I have experienced, you know, speaking to people um, at the top level, their work is 24 seven, not their work. I'm sorry, their customers, their customers are 24 seven. And you, you put it, you gave probably the best advice anyone could say. You have to care about your clients and you have to care about the people. And it shows if you're just here to make a commission um, short term, you might get lucky, but long term, it's going to be hard to, to stay in the game. And I think that's what's remarkable about your career is you've um, 
you've been so successful for so such a long time and you've you've continuously um changed with the times where you, you your technology is the best your social media is the best and that's why you're still you know successful because in your business it's so competitive and, you know, there's so many people trying to take, you know, there's, 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 I don't know how many, but I got to believe there's 10,000 brokers all trying to compete for the same for maybe a hundred properties. So it's a very competitive business. Um, and that's really what makes it remarkable about your career. And, you know, I've, I've known you for such a long time and I've been fortunate with Hope Living to be able to meet so many successful entrepreneurs, athletes, and people successful in their business and you obviously are at the level that is 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 where it's at. And that really comes out to my last question. If you weren't doing like, where do you see like with your business? Tell us like how many people are are currently on your team? Like where 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 what's the Joyce Ray team currently right now? Well, I you know, I've kind of taken a different approach than a lot of agents who have these enormous teams. Uh, my idea was to have more of a family. Uh, my team is like my expanded family. And um, of course, I head the global luxury division for Coal Banker in Southern California. And that is, you know, I'm, I, I, I mean, I have a passion about that also. But with my personal team of agents, I have 10 agents and I have a staff of five. And um, I, you know, I love helping all of those agents grow, and it, it's it, it's it, it it's a one they're wonderful relationships for me. Well, Joyce, I really appreciate you taking the time because I've known you for such a long time, but this is the first time I've re I've just to hear these stories um, and you opening up. I know anyone watching this, it's going to be, you know, a great story because so many people, you know, want to learn uh, from the best. And so for you opening up your, your, your kind of career and giving us an insight to where, how you got to where you got to, I really appreciate you sharing it as, as it's a treat for, for my audience, but also for me. So I thank you for sitting down with us um, and I wish you a, a great, uh, you know, a great rest of the day. Thank you. I'm heading out to the Beverly Hills Chamber tonight. It is their 100th anniversary, if you can believe it. And oh, wow. way back when, when Jack Huff was, I was a brand new realtor, he says, no, he told me no one can sell real estate in Beverly Hills without joining the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> you know what, you, <laughs> and, you're, and, and you're going tonight to celebrate it. So thank you again, Joyce, and have a fun night tonight. Thank you. Bye, bye, -bye. Sarah. It was Bye, fun. Joyce. Bye-bye.